Welcome to Oroctus in Focus. In this episode, we learn about the life of Vaclav Havel. Havel, a playwright, essayist, and political dissident, became one of the most important liberal thinkers in Eastern Europe. He is most well known for his role in the Velvet Revolution. The Velvet Revolution was a non-violent movement that negotiated an end to communist control of Czechoslovakia. Václav's role in this revolution resulted in him becoming the last president of Czechoslovakia in 1989 and the first president of the Czech Republic in 1993. Under Havel's presidency, the Czech Republic moved from a totalitarian state with a socialist economy to a democracy with a Western free market economy. He committed his life to promoting individual liberty and human rights. He was born into an influential and wealthy family and knew privilege until the communists took power in 1948. But then his father was imprisoned and his family was banished from Prague. He was forced to leave school at 15 years of age. However, this didn't stop him from making his way into the world of politics and writing. I'm here this morning to meet with the Czech ambassador, Her Excellency Hanna Motlova, to learn more about the life of Václav Havel. Ambassador, can you tell us about the role of Václav Havel in the Velvet Revolution? I think we should start really a little bit earlier because, of course, he was the, uh, the um, one of the leading figures of the Velvet Revolution or the um, uh, November uh, 1989 movement. But it goes back um, uh, further. I think uh, he really his uh, full engagement uh, in the political sense started in 70s, uh, because in, in 1977 he was one of the founders, uh, co-founder uh, of the um, Charter 77 Human Rights Initiative. He was imprisoned several times for his political beliefs, and and the longest imprisonment was from 1979 until 1983. So it was almost four years. He was one of the members of the committee um, uh, for the uh, defense of the unjustly um, persecuted. So since then, it started his really his is a very strong position um, in, in defense of democracy and uh, freedoms. He was one of the leading figures in the underground movement, so to speak. Uh, he was always uh, somehow um, defending, uh, you know, people and 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 trying to um, um, bring the attention of the international. Uh, arena to uh, what was happening in, in Czechoslovakia. Uh, later on, of course, uh, in uh, late uh, November, December that year, 1989, he was elected um, um, the last president of Czechoslovakia. As well as being um, a president of the Czech Republic, he was also a playwright and also an essayist and a philosopher. So how do the people of the Czech Republic remember him today? I think he, he's well remembered. I think what's important that, uh, of course, he, he had a, a really, so to speak, multifaceted life. Uh, his work is uh, staged uh, in, in the Czech Republic nowadays and it's staged uh, abroad as well. So that also has a, you know, a certain um, connection with people because they go and 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 uh, um, you see those um, uh, plays. But of course, there's a lot of books he wrote, uh, so a lot of people also uh, can go back to those ideas uh, expressed by him and captured in several books. He he well, he had a quite strong voice. Uh, he also he was all quite outspoken whenever it was about the, the question of human rights, especially, but also um, a democracy. And so he, he he was constantly really um, as it was described in uh, on the plague of his uh, bust in the um, U.S. Congress uh, he was a pursuer of truth and I think that was something very important for him pursuer of truth and defender of human rights. The Irish Parliament have decided to have a permanent memory to Václav Havel located now in Leinster House. I'm sure that gives you much pleasure. I think it's it's an uh, enormous uh, um, enormous uh, act uh, of of um, a full recognition and, and respect paid to Václav Havel, and I think it also means so much uh, to the Czechs. Uh, it means to the Czechs um, in the Czech Republic, but also to Czechs living here in in, in Ireland. I think it will be a, a permanent. Um, um, connecting moment between the two nations and the Czechs and the Irish. Uh, 
it's a, it's a, a very pleasant uh, occasion and uh, something that's very unique. It's also unique that this is the first time that we've actually used the space here in a very productive manner. And, uh, uh, you know, the traffic through this area is increasing every day. We have the banking inquiry at the moment, so you can imagine there's a fair few people coming in and out the, to the, the rooms. But the committee rooms here are used quite a bit. And uh, so this area has become more public, and it's an ideal space for the display of this very valuable bust. It's only when you travel and you realise how fortunate, by and large, my generation has been living in this country that we haven't had the experiences of the people that we are now recognising and the hardship that some people went through in order to um, sort of gain uh, freedom and independence. As I said, we are here to commemorate the life of Václav uh, Havel. Uh, he was a man of many things, uh, a playwright, a poet, and a political dissident, who after the fall of communism was president of Czechoslovakia from 1989 to 92, and of the Czech Republic from 1993 to 2003. People say to me, well, what's the significance of having a bust of Václav Havel in the Irish Parliament. It's there to remind all of us, including those of us who are fortunate to be serving here in Parliament at the moment, of the value of freedom, and the value of democracy, and that we are inclined to forget these things very easily. And we take things for granted. And it's only when you read uh, what these people went through. And the other extraordinary thing that I found in reading through was the, the velvet revolution that took place, the manner in which it did take place without a great deal of bloodshed, that they had this revolution uh, and people um, <coughs> took over, as they say, in a bloodless uh, change. Uh, and that, to me, says an awful lot for the man himself <coughs> also. Ireland is the first European country to commemorate Václav Havel. And we're very proud of that also. And to those of you who are from the Czech Republic, to those of you who are from the former Czechoslovakia and the Czech Republic, uh, those of you who have worked there, and the ambassador who is here representing uh, the Czech Republic, um, I want to say a big thank you for allowing this occasion to happen. happen. I also want to thank Bill Shipsey who really uh, went about in a very enthusiastic way to um, bring about this special occasion and I also the people who contributed to uh, the, the presentation of this bust. In this act we commemorate and pay respect to this outstanding Czech statesman, statesman and committed yet questioning European. We remind ourselves and others in Ireland and the Czech Republic of his creative life and plentiful work dedicated to freedom, democracy, human rights, public service and the arts. Seamus Heaney captured it best in 2003 in Dublin at the presentation of the inaugural Ambassador of Conscience Award conferred to Václav Havel. Havel is the Athenian of our times, one for whom principles and affections were sacrosanct, one who, like Anticon, refused to betray a personal sense of transcendent right <coughs> and whose integrity thereby served the res publica more widely and effectively than any plot or party. Privileged by my position, I, on behalf of the Czech Republic, express profound appreciation to Erachtus for honouring Václav Havel by placing his bust in Leinster House, thus becoming the second national parliament after the US Congress to do so, and, and, and by giving it this prominent spot. For Havel, 
Ireland was a beautiful, glorious, and hospitable country. He admired, as he stated in Dublin during the state dinner in his honor in 1996, <coughs> the stable, never ebbing potential of thoughts, ideas, and goodwill that the Irish have been exporting for centuries, both to Europe and across the world. Havel saw three fundamental bonds between Ireland and the Czechlands. First, the Celtic past. Second, the many long centuries when both small nations were compelled repeatedly to ascertain their identity to fight for their place in the sun in the environments dominated by large neighbors. And third, the important role of culture in history when a commitment to culture means a keen sensitivity to general affairs of our world and a heightened perception of the dangers that threaten it. From now on, there will be the fourth bond, this bust of Václav Havel. Well, my first thoughts, I suppose, as a parliamentarian and also as an architect, that this is a wonderful space that we're in, in Leinster House 2000. And it's a very appropriate place, as the Count Corley just said, when he officially launched it, if you like, is that an awful lot of people will come through this space. And the bust of Václav Havel is there to remind people that democracy isn't a given, that freedom and liberty are not permanent necessarily, uh, constant vigilance is needed, and, and people of conscience and courage, like Václav Havel, who spent four years in jail during the communist regime for simply wanting to assert the human rights to which the Soviet Union had signed up for in the Helsinki Final Accords uh, are a constant reminder of the need to be vigilant. But it is very nice to be reminded by such an elegant piece of sculpture uh, because it truly is quite beautiful and it's very well placed, I think, in its surroundings. Yes, um, Václav Havel was the first winner of the Amnesty International Ambassador of Conscience Award which was presented to him in Dublin in 2003 at the hand of our great late poet Seamus Heaney and when he died in 2011 I was also involved in some memorials both in Prague and in Europe but I was very keen to have a memorial in Ireland and in fact in 2013 we installed the Havels Place in St. Patrick's Park but this bust by Maria Sheberova is the first bust in a parliament uh, in Europe. Uh, there was one installed, a different one, in the US Congress uh, last year but I'm very proud that Ireland gets the first one in Europe. Art for Amnesty is Amnesty International National's global, global artist engagement program. So when artists want to work for human rights with Amnesty International, they tend to do it through uh, Art for Amnesty. And that includes, obviously, the late Seamus Heaney was a great supporter, but also you too. In fact, last night in Montreal, uh, Bono brought on stage a woman called um, Insaf Haider, whose husband, Raif uh, Badawi, was sentenced to 10 years and a thousand lashes in, the Saudi, in Saudi Arabia. Um, and uh, Bono made a very public plea on his behalf. So that's the type of um, artists that we work with, not only Irish ones, of course, but all over the world. And it's to try and allow artists who want to draw attention to human rights and to support Amnesty to do so. Initially, it was funded by Art for Amnesty, but then um, Beta, a uh, Czech photographer based in Ireland, she did a crowdfunding uh, amongst Czechs and Irish who have business interest in the Czech Republic, but mostly small donations from Czechs living in Ireland. And that made it a, obviously a, a more poignant and um, people who wanted to show their respect and love for their late president. Yeah, this is, um, it was a um, competition in Czech Republic, which I won together with other three person. And on base of this, I was asked by Mr. Bill Schöpse if it will be possible to get my uh, bust for Irish Parliament. So I was very surprised because in um, first moment I thought it's a joke. <laughs> Really, but of course, after we had um, communication, email communication, uh, later Bill arrived to Prague, so we met together, and in the end, you see result. <laughs> the bust of Václav Havel will be permanently displayed in Leinster House on the lower floor of LH2000. For more information on the Houses of the Oireachtas, please visit our website at oireachtas.ie. Join us again next time for another Oireachtas in Focus. That's it from me. Many thanks for joining me. <laughs>